Destiny is certainly not perfect, but it's still one of the most popular games of all time, and with popularity comes other people who want to copy the game and take inspiration from it. So today, we are investigating games that copied Destiny, starting with one that copied the enemies, interface, location, and even stuff as simple as the emotes. The first obvious thing is that the enemies look shockingly similar to those in Destiny, especially this one that is basically just a copy-paste version of the Cabal. Even the names of these enemies sound a little familiar. Both games have enemies called Scorn, the Thorn is an enemy that just looks like a big blue shank from Destiny, and this game even has multiple enemies called the Hive. Alongside these enemies, the game also has all the exact same weapon types, rarity colors, engrams that are just a slightly different shape, and even the character screen looks pretty familiar. The game has a social space that's basically just a more high-tech version of the tower that we all know in Destiny, and something that really stands out here is the legend branding. You can see the word legend all over the tower and even on the loading screens, and as you may know, the catchphrase become legend has been a big part of the Destiny branding dating all the way back to 2014. The gameplay in general is just an underwhelming version of Destiny's combat, and I guess that's still kind of impressive considering that this is a mobile game. But take a look at the Fist of Havoc super that we have in Destiny, and then take a look at this pretty lame copy that we have in Shadowgun. People have definitely taken notice of stuff like this, and many of the comments on the trailers say things like, not going to lie, I thought I was watching some sort of Destiny gameplay that I haven't seen before. It's impossible to say for sure why they copied this much stuff from Destiny, but perhaps this guy is right and they are just trying to bank off Destiny's success. In their defense though, this game is well made and actually is really popular with tens of millions of downloads on the Google Play Store, so it's clear that they're doing something right. The game is fun, and I'll give them some bonus points because the stuff that they copied from Destiny isn't an exact copy, so at least they changed it up a little bit before adding it to their game. However, the same cannot be said for Void Crew, because they literally took the pyramid ships from Destiny and then just slapped them into their game without changing them at all. Like, obviously Destiny did not invent the pyramid shape, but look closely, there's no denying that this ship was stolen. Every tiny detail is exactly the same. The Destiny community noticed this pretty fast and called out this game for their very obvious plagiarism. One person even said, Inspiration may turn into infringement if they're not careful, implying that Bungie might take legal action against the game developer. The trailer looks a lot like a Destiny spin-off game that takes place in a different universe, and the general art style and character design also look extremely similar. After hearing the criticism, the creators of this game admitted that they copied some of the designs and said that they might have to reconsider some of their art to, quote, stand out more clearly compared to Destiny 2. To be fair, most of the game does indeed stand out and the gameplay is very different from Destiny, even though some of the art might have a strong inspiration. At the end of the day, it's pretty obvious that Void Crew copied some stuff from Destiny, but the same could not be said for War Thunder, which is perhaps the most comprehensive military vehicle game of all time. It has thousands of different tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships that date all the way back to the 1920s, meaning that there are over 100 years of vehicles represented here. Just like Destiny, the game has beautiful music and sound effects, and coupled with the 4K resolution, it's pretty easy to get fully immersed. I mean, just look at the graphics on these fire and smoke effects, I love the attention to detail. Another great and realistic feature is that the vehicles have individual components that all take damage separately, and you can even use a special x-ray mode to see this in-game. War Thunder is free on all of your favorite platforms like Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, so download it now using my link in the description to claim a large bonus pack if you're a new player or if you haven't played in the last 6 months. You'll get a premium account, multiple premium vehicles, a 3D decoration, and more. Like I said, it's completely free, so go download it now and try it out. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. So in Destiny, we all have characters known as Guardians, and this next game ripped off basically everything, including the word Guardian, as they named their game Ares Rise of Guardians. This game is only playable in Korean, so apologies if you're not able to read any of the text, but it essentially looks like a combination of Genshin Impact and Destiny. The characters themselves are definitely inspired by Destiny Guardians, and these two in particular look exactly like armor that you would see in Destiny. It looks so similar that when I sent this picture to my friends, they actually believed it was from Destiny. It gets even better though, because the Guardians literally have ghost companions, just like in Destiny, and I even found this one that looks exactly like a golden version of the harpy enemy. But it doesn't stop there because there are also vehicles that look and sound just like Destiny Sparrows, and the Guardians use these to explore the director, which also looks familiar. My favorite thing though is the obvious inspiration that they took from the destinations, like this one, which clearly looks like old Mercury from Destiny. 
This other destination might seem unique at first glance, but it is suspiciously similar to this Destiny concept art. The social space, which has the very original name of Guardian Tower, is definitely inspired by the Destiny 1 Tower and of course the Dreaming City destination. The tower has a story which basically involves it getting destroyed and then you have to fight back to regain control, which will definitely sound familiar to anyone who played Destiny 2 in 2017. I also thought that this was a pretty interesting scene that takes place during the invasion of Guardian Tower. But even this knockoff isn't as blatant as Luna Abyss, because they literally took this cutscene from Destiny and then just painted the Traveler red. The insanity continues as there are tons of these doors throughout the game which are clearly direct copies of the Destiny portals used to reach the Infinite Forest. Now don't get me wrong, other games are allowed to have triangular doors too, but as you will see in the rest of this section, there is so much copying that this is not a coincidence. The first enemies you encounter look very much like thralls, and it makes you go into slow motion when you defeat them. Another thing I noticed was this part felt very familiar, and it looks quite a bit like the first mission of Destiny 2. In both games, you go inside a massive wall when you first start out. The game itself is pretty fun and involves a lot of creepy environments and projectiles that you have to dodge, but the gameplay is very unlike Destiny because it has literal aimbot turned on at all times. If you just pull the trigger, the game just automatically locks onto the enemies and makes it completely impossible to ever miss. The game also has another enemy type called Bloody Bones, which reminds me a lot of the servitors from Destiny, and since these are also covered in spikes, it reminds me a lot of Sepix Prime. The environments also look extremely familiar to say the least. This guy said, there is no way that this isn't just a screenshot from Destiny. And I don't blame him, this could easily be on Nessus or even the throne world. The color scheme, the architecture, the rocks, even the trees, it's all exactly the same. There are even these lasers which look strangely similar to the ones found in the Destiny strike called the Pyramidian. This air vent seems innocent enough until you realize that there's this exact thing in the very first mission of Destiny 2. There's inspiration, and there is copying. I'll repeat what others have already said. As a Destiny player, if someone showed me this trailer and told me it was the next Destiny expansion, I would believe them. When asked about the obvious copying, the developers admitted that it was inspired by Destiny, but also pointed out that their game is a completely different genre. This is very true, and it's also the reason why the game has no chance of replacing Destiny as a franchise. The game is still in early development, and while I only played the demo version, I can say it's quite well made and enjoyable, especially considering that it's only made by a small team of about 15 people. But that team is large compared to Destiny Zero, a game that was made by just one person. It is very different though, because it's a fan project that intentionally takes place in the Destiny universe. This is a browser game, meaning that anyone can play it without even downloading anything, and it comes with two modes. You can select Strikes or Crucible. After flying in with your ship, you enter a top-down environment where you can use some of Destiny's most recognizable weapons to take down various enemies. It's actually much harder than it looks, and you can get taken out pretty easily and consumed by the darkness if you're not careful. Obviously, there are quite a few things in this game that are directly copied from Destiny, but in this case it's a free, fan-made project that was just made for fun and it was advertised as being in the Destiny universe. There's a big difference between that and a game that is made by an entire studio where they are just copying parts of Destiny into their game with the goal of making profit. This game is pretty limited in terms of what you can actually do, but that's not the case in Roblox. Yep, that's right, someone recreated almost all of Destiny 2 within Roblox. After hearing the classic Destiny theme and loading into the game, you can select a character and enter a fully functional game that is actually extremely impressive. It even has those annoying pop-up notifications just like the real game. You can load into the tower and explore around, talk to the vendors, and even buy armor. There's a variety of sets available, but some are pretty expensive and you can't afford to buy them right away. You can dress up like certain NPCs, which is pretty cool, and you can even become Rolk if you happen to have $2 million lying around. Again, this is a great example of a harmless fan-made project that is really fun to mess around in and explore. You can enter custom-made strikes, race your sparrows, talk to shacks and experience the crucible, or just explore and patrol and use a variety of signature Destiny weapons. The Sunshot hand cannon seems pretty overpowered to me. It's able to one-shot all of these Cabal and makes massive explosions, but the Vex Mythoclast is pretty good as well. The attention to detail is really impressive. Everything has custom animations and sound effects, and even the reloads look pretty nice. Speaking of which, did you know a lot of people reload incorrectly in Destiny 2? Believe it or not, most players reload their weapons incorrectly and it makes them significantly worse at the game. So to find out more, watch this video about 80 Destiny things you might do wrong every day. 
And also, go download War Thunder using my link below to claim the large bonus pack with a premium account, vehicles, and 3D decoration. Play for free and go enjoy the most comprehensive vehicle combat game of all time.